My name is Tim Sutinen from privacyproshop.com. On this video, I'll show you how you can use multiple session messenger IDs in Linux. A cool thing about session is that you can create as many session IDs as you want. What's less obvious is how you use them as the current version of session desktop doesn't support multiple IDs through the graphical user interface. There are plans to make a pro version of Session that will include multiple identity support, but it doesn't exist yet. I will be installing and configuring Session using the official Oxen Debian apt repository. I use Pop OS Linux version 22.04, which is based on Ubuntu 22.04, so this method should work on any Ubuntu or Debian derivative such as Linux Mint, Zorin OS, or Elementary OS. All of the commands are going to be in the description below. This video is brought to you by privacyproshop.com, where you can buy yourself a permanent session username that your friends and family can contact you with, instead of having to copy-paste a 66-character hexadecimal session ID to contact you with. Registration of the name is fast and easy and costs just $5 at this time. We accept major credit cards and cryptocurrencies. If you pay with crypto, you can stay anonymous. While you're there, please check out our other offerings like LokiNet domain names, LokiNet anonymous VPN access, and Nemo Mail, the anonymous email service over LokiNet. I'll begin with installing Session Messenger. The directions on this guide are specific to the Debian or apt version of Session. If you have the Flatpak, app image, or snap version of Session installed, some of this might apply, but not all of it. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a version of this guide for one of the other package manager versions, and I just might make a guide for that. The first part of the instructions comes from deb.oxen.io. By adding this repository, you will have access to other cool software made by Oxen Privacy Tech Foundation, such as Oxen and Lokinet. If you want to find out more about them, please check out my YouTube channel. There are many videos about them. First, run these three commands to prepare your computer you will need to open a terminal to enter these commands. Number one, download and install Oxen Privacy Tech Foundation's digital signing key. These software packages have been signed with. Number two, create the apt source file so apt knows where to download the installation packages from. Number three, update apt so it knows which repository contains what software. Once that completes, you can install session with this command. sudo apt install session dash desktop. Once session is installed, open the GNOME file manager and set it to show hidden files. Then open a text editor and create two files you will need these six lines. The first line, in brackets, is desktop entry. The second line is the name. You can type anything in here. This is the name that shows up as the name in the list of applications. Third line is the location of the executable file along with the user, the defined user data directory. That squiggly lines line there means your own home directory. So in this case, it would be slash home slash demo would be the same as squiggly line. And if you add that period in front of the name, that makes it a hidden directory. The fourth line is the type that tells GNOME that this is an application and it knows what to do with it. Fifth line is where it can find the, the icon file and the icon name is session desktop. Once you have that in there, the session icon will show up. And then finally, the comment line. Again, this can be anything. This shows up in the Pop! OS launcher. Then save this file with the .desktop extension 
in the home directory dot local slash share slash applications and then do the same thing for the second instance of session. Then save the file in the same directory. Now you can click on the applications menu and you should see your new icons listed. On Pop OS, you can also just hit the Windows key, which Pop OS calls the super key, to open the launcher and start typing session. You should see your entries show up. The original session app shortcut that was created by the installer will also show in the list. If you open that, you will get a third session instance. So, let's test it. First, fire up the instance number one, and you should get the screen where you can either create a new session ID, restore your account, or link a device. For this demonstration, I will create a new session ID. If this, se if this is a session ID that you plan to use permanently, please save the recovery phrase as that is the only way to restore your account if your computer should crash. Then, to make it easier to figure out what ID is what, change the appearance on this first one. Choose something like Classic Light to make it look different. Then open the second instance and go through the same setup. Either new or restore a previous account. For now, I'll just create another one. Then I'll copy the session ID from this instance and create a new message from the first instance and send a, send a message. It should arrive in just a few seconds. There it is. I'll accept the message and we are in business with two independent session IDs. That's all she wrote. Have a happy day.